Welcome to Craftlit, the podcast for crafters who love books. My name is Heather Ordover, and I'm podcasting from where the Delaware River meets the Old York Road, New Hope, Pennsylvania. Not episode 516. Stay safe. This is not a Craftlet episode. This is, however, a Craftlet update. Uh, hi. Lots of things have changed since last we spoke at the Inter Treasure Island, and I needed to give y'all an update. If you follow me on Instagram, you have seen some hints. If you follow Craftlet on Facebook, you may have seen a hint or two. And now I'm going to give you the skinny. You may recall Maya Daguerre who read Sense and Sensibility for us, whose voice you know and love. Well, she and a friend of hers, Eden, are going to be reading our next book for us. They are reading The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Now, I know this is a little risky because we have a a definite split in Bronte loving in the craft lit community. Uh, Some are very, very strong supporters of the Bronte, and some, not so much. Anne Bronte, the one who wrote The Tenant of Wildfell Hall, is perhaps the the most uh, enigmatic. She is certainly the enigma of the group, which makes her an awful lot of fun. So there will be lots of fun information about Anne as we gear up and get into the book itself. But there are several other things I wanted to let you know about before we get there. One, COVID-19. There's been all sorts of craziness going on in reporting. And so I wanted to give you uh, the skinny as it stands right now today, 1144 a.m. on Friday the 13th. This is coming from the CDC via the Washington Post. The virus can live 24 hours on cardboard, three days on plastic or stainless steel, Three hours if it is aerosolized, which it never is except for in a laboratory, and four hours on copper. All of that said, the number one way it is spread is through droplets. That is, if someone sneezes or coughs at you. If you are within six feet of a sneeze or cough aimed in your direction, you have probably been hit by very tiny droplets. Droplets are the way this is spread. And it's not like somebody has to sneeze in your face because what happens is the droplets get on your hands and you rub your eyes or you touch the corner of your mouth or something to uh, make contact with a surface that would allow a virus into your system. That's a mucous membrane. That's your eyes. uh, That's your mouth. Here's where all of the hand washing comes in because if you wash your hands appropriately, which by the way, The fear statement from Dune, I must not fear, fear is the mind killer, that, if you can recite it, is the proper length of time to wash your hands. That or sing happy birthday twice. Anyway, that's a weird side note. But washing your hands, both front and back, will save you. I couldn't find any numbers for how long the virus will live on fabric. I'm not sure why that news is hard to find. When it comes available, I'll share it wherever I can. Uh, Please feel free, if you know the answer to this, to share it within whatever group you're on, whether it's Ravelry or Facebook or Instagram. Uh, I know everybody would like to know. Here's the other important thing to know. COVID-19, as we've all heard, has a 14-day incubation period. Here's the problem. Those 14 days are 100% symptom-free. 80% of the people who get COVID-19 will have a very mild case. You might even be able to walk around because unlike the flu, you won't necessarily have aches and pains. You'll have a dry cough. You'll have trouble breathing. You may not even spike a huge fever. You may just kind of feel lousy. The problem is during those 14 days and for quite a while after, you can give it to somebody else. 
Who can give it to somebody else? Who can give it to somebody else? That's why they're talking about flattening the curve. I will link out from this to a visual of what flattening the curve means. The whole idea is just to stop the spread as much as possible. Because otherwise it's a, you tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two people and they tell two people and then everybody gets it. Now, where this also gets complicated is that we don't have enough data yet to know for certain how long the virus stays contagious in you. What they do know is that once you get symptoms, the virus will live in your respiratory tract for 20 more days. You may feel fine, but it's still living in your respiratory tract. You can still shed the virus for another 8 to 37 days after that. Now, that's where they don't know if at that point you're just shedding it in an inactive state or if you're shedding it and it's still contagious. This makes it really clear why the health officials who actually know what they're talking about are so insistent that the most important thing we can do is wash our hands. Because if people around us are shedding the virus randomly and touching things, if they are still a hand sneezer or cougher instead of using the elbow to cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough, if they get those droplets on their hands and touch something and you touch it soon thereafter, the only way to stop yourself from accidentally transmitting it to yourself is to wash your hands. It's the easiest way to do it. So until they know more about whether shedding the virus after you've had an active case uh, is eight to 37 days, I mean, that'll certainly help us once we know that, but it's not going to change anything. Just wash your hands. Honestly, this is a great moment to get kids to seriously wash their hands. I am thrilled. (laughs) The boys will finally be washing their hands. No, they've actually been pretty good about it before, but but now it's really no joke. And I kind of think it's cool that the rest of the world finally gets to see what Craft Lit listeners have known for a really long time, which is that we're all in it together. I have watched our community of crazy book lovers share and learn from each other for almost 14 years. We get it where other people might not. Just because you're healthy and fine doesn't mean you can't give it to somebody else. And at least in the United States, uh, they are occasionally on the news showing maps that make it look very much like entire states have no cases of COVID-19. That's misleading. Those are states where either testing hasn't ramped up or testing results haven't been reported. So so there's nowhere that hasn't got a case somewhere. There's been a lot of talk in the United States as well about uh, not just with testing, but with the the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, which if you aren't in the United States, you may still have heard about it, especially if you watch The Walking Dead, because it, the CDC plays prominently in the first uh, the first year of that show. The CDC is getting blamed on the news, and the CDC is really not a guilty party here. The CDC has been gradually unfunded over the last 20, 30 years. So uh, they no longer had the infrastructure or the budget to just crank out a bunch of tests. The big problem is that the World Health Organization, the WHO, offered test kits to the United States. The United States said no. That's a whole different kettle of fish, but trust the scientists, trust the CDC. And one of the most important things that I heard uh, coming out of the mouths of scientists was this. Uh, Scientists and doctors and nurses, do not go to the hospital or the ER to get a test. Call your doctor let them know if you think you have coronavirus, they will tell you what to do. That said, do go to the hospital if you can't breathe. 
every other symptom, every other problem with COVID-19 will go away on its own the same way a cold or any other virus does. If you can't breathe, if the shortness of breath is so bad that you can't get up and walk to get a drink of water, that's a good time to call an ambulance or get somebody to take you to the hospital. Other than that, don't go. You need to leave those beds available for the people who can't breathe. The other thing about this is children seem to be less susceptible to this than adults. We know any adult with a compromised immune system or with a history of respiratory illnesses is at risk. Now, you know, if you've been listening for a while, I had both a nasty flu and pneumonia back when we were doing Jane Eyre. I did get the pneumonia vaccine the year next. That is not going to protect me from COVID-19. So I am being careful. I am currently in the basement. I've been spending a lot of time in the basement. I could be in the 14 day with no uh, ill effects happening period right now. I have no idea. So stay safe, wash your hands like a crazy person. That's the best kind of crazy to be. Don't freak out. In fact, one of the best ways to get rid of COVID-19 virus on surfaces is sunlight. So go outside. Just maybe go where the people aren't. Go for walks in the nature. Whatever. Just don't be close to people or touch things that other people are touching right now unless you have, what is it, 50% alcohol-based wipes or hand sanitizer. I've been carrying wipes around with me like a silly person. Uh, I wrap them around the shopping cart push bar, <laughs> which is actually kind of nice because they're squishy and they're soft and they're cool. So uh, stay safe. Be well. Oh, and one other interesting tip I uh, I heard from a friend. She has started wearing uh, latex gloves, the kind that you'd wear to, I don't know, dye your hair or paint if you didn't want to get paint all over your hands. She's been wearing latex gloves when she's been out in public because she realized she was less likely to touch her face if she had weird gloves on. So this doesn't have anything to do with uh, not touching something that has the virus still on it. It has everything to do with resisting the temptation to touch your face, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, there's no reason to wear masks, apparently. Uh, you want to leave the masks available in the stores for, in the stores, in the store rooms, in the storehouses, in the stock warehouses uh, for medical personnel. Uh, we don't want them running out of masks because if they get sick, we are all in deep yogurt. Uh, some people are finding that their children are really upset because their sports teams and their extracurricular activities are being canceled. I suggest they listen to podcasts. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but this is, you know, this is a worldwide victory garden moment. This is the time for us all to pull together. We are living in one planet, one world. And how nice that we get to do it together. So be well. Lots of fluids. Vitamin C. <laughs> Share information you learn with each other so that we can all benefit from your wisdom too. If you are home and bored and you know anything about WordPress, I could really use some volunteers to help me with the website. Things have changed in the WordPress world while I was working like a crazy person and uh, I'm, I'm going to need some help. And the other reason I'm going to need some volunteer help is because I was laid off in January. There was a huge layoff at the company. Uh, I was one of the the ones to go. And uh, honestly, on the one hand, it was a huge relief because, wow, I was up at four in the morning and sometimes I didn't get home until nine at night. And then I was up at four the next day, which is why you didn't hear much from me or see much of me online. It was, it was a relief to lose the crazy schedule. I really miss the people. I loved the scientists that I worked with. Um, and I'm still in touch with them, which is great. But I am now on a job hunt, which 
makes this really weird because uh, we're not supposed to be congregating with people or going on things like interviews. So everything is moving to online. Everything is moving to online, which it, it makes the whole thing interesting. Uh, so if you are a WordPress person or even sort of a WordPress person, but you're good with resizing images or you have ideas about what would make the Craftlet website work better, please contact me, heather at craftlet.com or... 206-350-1642. And you can leave a message there. Uh, Tenant of Wildfell Hall will be coming at the end of April. That's when we're going to start it officially. And that is our 14th anniversary. That's when we're going to be release releasing it. I am so excited. There is another thing that's happening. Uh, thing 2, who is now 16 years old, and his name is Aiden, he and I are starting a YouTube thing on the Craftlet channel called My Latest Obsession, where we talk through something that he usually has brought to me, given me, you know, here, mom, read this. You know, I get the instructions from him. Mom, you got to read this. So I read it. And it's great. And so we're going to share what it is about uh, uh, the thing. In this case, it's actually a graphic novel that he brought, brought home from school. Um, we'll talk about it, what makes it great, what makes it interesting, what we like best about it. We're going to do it as a live stream. I may occasionally take audio clips from it and bring them over into Craftlet, but for the most part, it's going to live on YouTube. We are talking very seriously about doing it as a live stream on YouTube. So if you have an opinion about what time of day or when that would be best to put it up as a live stream, uh, let us know, because we'll try and work around uh, everybody's schedule. His, mine, yours. We'll make it fun. Okay, I think that's all my notes. That is indeed all of my notes. Flatten the curve. Wash your hands. Be kind to each other. It's the best advice I heard recently. What's the one thing everybody could do right now that would make the world the better place? And the answer was... Give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I love that. That is beautiful and so true. So on that happy note, I will talk to you soon. Aiden and I will have our latest obsession up for you on YouTube, and I'll make sure I let everybody know about that when it happens. Hoping for later today, kind of doubtful, but nothing's ever impossible. All right, take care. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs>